Hi, I'm Ralph. I'm Paul. And I'm Dr. Jen. This is Awesome Astronomy on YouTube. And in this show, we're going to answer that puzzling question, why does the moon shine? And if you like what we're doing in this series, help us out by hitting that subscribe button and liking the show. Awesome Astronomy is also available twice a month in podcast form. Go check them out on the links below. So we've all seen the moon hanging there in the sky as a thin sliver, a crescent, a half moon or a full moon. And sometimes you can't even see it at all. So why does the moon shine at all? And the simple answer is, if you've got somewhere better to be, that it doesn't. It emits no light whatsoever. No light that we can see at all. It all comes from the sun. Now, be gone to whatever else it was that you've got that's more important. But for those of you that are still here, you know there's more to this and want to know more because you know that knowledge is power and ignorance is, well, dumb. The bodies in our solar system, planets, dwarf planets, moons, comets and asteroids, they don't emit light like the sun does. They don't emit light of their own making. We can see them because they reflect the sun's light. These bodies can also absorb the sun's light and re-emit it at a different wavelength. But this absorbed and re-emitted light is invisible to the human eye. With specialised cameras, we can detect it. But we can only see these bodies with our eyes because they reflect the sun's light. Of course, there's always a difficult child that upsets the natural order of things, and that would be Jupiter in our solar system and huge gas giant planets in other star systems that are so large that their gravitational churning generates enough heat to emit a small fraction of its light as infrared energy. We can only detect this with infrared sensors, so it is emitting light, but not light that we can see, and not very much. The vast majority of the light we see is still light reflecting off it from the sun or its nearest star. And we can actually see all the objects in the universe as a continuum where the larger the object is, the more light it reflects until it gets so large that it generates its own heat and emits it as weak infrared light. And then as it gets even larger, or objects get larger, they begin emitting visible light. So for everything smaller than a star or a failed star, they only reflect light from dust grains to meteors, asteroids and comets, from moons to rocky planets. They all simply reflect light from their nearest light-emitting object, which is usually their nearest star. And that reflected light is what's known as albedo. Different materials reflect different amounts of light and therefore have a higher or lower albedo level. So as you can see, forest and soil have a low albedo, whereas fresh snow and clouds have a high albedo. This means that asteroids and the planet Mercury, which have dark soils and rock particles that don't reflect much light, are the dimmest objects in the solar system, while Saturn's moons Enceladus, which is entirely covered in fresh white ice, is the most reflective body in the solar system. So Mercury has a very low albedo, and Enceladus and other icy bodies in the solar system have a very high albedo. And that, of course, explains why the moon has those crescent or half moon phases. If it emitted its own light, like the sun, you'd expect it to always appear as a full moon. But it doesn't. We see it move across the sky, revealing itself bathed in more light, night after night, until full. And then the shadow begins engulfing it again until it's no longer visible. And this is because of the moon's position relative to the sun. Half of the moon is always bathed in sunlight because the moon orbits the Earth, which is a globe. Sorry, flat earthers, I'm afraid it is. And this is further proof, if any were needed. And because of this, there is always a half of the moon that is fully illuminated. It just depends where the moon is in relation to the sun and the Earth that gives us moon phases. So, how much of that illuminated half we can see. As the moon moves around the Earth in its orbit, we see more and more of the illuminated half, and then it gradually falls into shadow again, night after night, as a regular and eternal procession. And this is just a consequence of a single light source, the sun, illuminating a globe, the moon, that is also complicating things by orbiting another globe, the Earth, where we're observing the reflective moon. 
I know that's not a helpful way of explaining it, but skip back 15 seconds and take in what Jenny and I said, because that's the crux of why the moon seems to shine and why that illumination changes night after night. But for completeness, there is also a phenomenon coined by Sir Patrick Moore, known as transient lunar phenomena, which is where a flash of light can be seen on the moon, like a small explosion or a flashlight being turned on and off again. This is actually one of the earliest and best images of a transient lunar phenomenon, and given the amount of people imaging and videoing the moon these days, it is quite surprising that we don't see it more often, if it does actually exist. Some possible explanations for these flashes of light are electrostatic discharges on the moon, a bit like lightning. We see this around the solar system and we know electrically charged particles can collect in the moon's cold craters during solar storms. Another possible explanation could be illuminated gas clouds that erupt from deep in the lunar crust. We've seen this with radon gas on the moon, but it would have to be a lot of erupting gas and it would have to be perfectly illuminated by the sun to show up in telescope images over such a vast distance. But perhaps the most likely cause, if this is a real phenomenon at all, is explosions caused by meteor impacts. We know the solar system is littered with rocks from the size of grains of dust to asteroids miles across. And while there are very few larger asteroids free floating outside the asteroid belt these days, there are lots of rocks and boulders buzzing the moon all the time. On Earth, they heat up as they hit the atmosphere and vaporize. But as the moon has no atmosphere to speak of at all, they slam into the surface of the moon, creating a lot of heat and light. If we happen to look at the moon at the right time when a large meteor hit it, we would see a flash of light, though nowhere near as bright as that animation. This is probably the best footage we have of a meteorite hitting the moon taken on the 11th of September 2013. However, none of these are the moon's light itself. As mentioned earlier, the moon emits no light, only reflects it from the sun. Or sometimes it actually reflects the light being reflected off the Earth onto the Moon and back to us again. But similarly, we may one day have cities on the Moon. NASA plans to send humans back to the Moon to stay there permanently, maybe as early as the middle of this decade. The Chinese, Europeans and Russians are also keen to set up bases on the Moon, and it's hard to believe that in a few decades, and certainly within hundreds of years from now, there won't be cities there with hundreds or thousands of people working and living on the moon or Mars, all creating their own light, which may be visible to people looking up from Earth. Of course, that will be artificial light generated on the surface of these worlds by humans rather than those worlds emitting light themselves. And if you like this video, do go and check out our podcast at the links below. And please also help this YouTube channel by hitting the subscribe button here and liking the show.